it. Mac Type Radio. Yeah, yeah, you rocking with the hottest radio station, Mac Type Radio. Red to learn, show yours truly, Mac Joker, and it's going down. We got a special guest in the building. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Let them know who you are and what you do. Hey guys, my name is Ludovica, Ludovica Songs. I'm super excited to be here. Glad to be here. Well, it's going down. We got Ludovica in the building. Let's jump straight into it, Ludovica. Um, so what exactly um, is it that you do? You're an artist, correct? Yes, independent for now. I'm okay. So singer, songwriter. That's my title. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. And you're originally from Italy? I'm originally from Italy, born and raised. Okay. No doubt. How was that? Uh, tell us how that experience was. How was that growing up uh, over there in Italy? I loved, I love being from Italy. Don't get me wrong. I love it. Um, when I was 17, then I just decided to move here. But growing up there was just amazing. I mean, I miss my food. I miss my people. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Every day, all day. So Italy is really a special place to be, to be born and, and raised at. So... No doubt. Now, growing up in Italy, in, in Italy forgive me, uh, were you into music then, or well, it wasn't until you moved to uh, uh, the uh, the United States? Yeah, I, I was. Um, I basically was born into music. My whole family is very, very musical. We all do kind of different things in different categories of the industry. I just happen to be the black sheep of the family. I just, you know, I detached from classical music. I just went straight into hip hop and R&B. No doubt, no doubt, <laughs> no doubt. That's my lane, I, and I've always been a lover of that. But yeah, it was basically music accompanied me from the very beginning. Um, and then, you know, people heard the story many, many times. I detached from music for a little while, and then when I got back, well, when I when I moved to the U.S., I finally you know, made music my livelihood. So here we are. Oh, no doubt. Uh, and if you don't mind touching on it, it's on you. Uh, where, where did the detachment come from? Was it uh, personal or just, or? You know, yeah, no, it was 100% personal. It had nothing to do with uh, my love for it. I think, you know, insecurities happen. Um, I was uh, experiencing a certain stage in my life. I was in a certain mental rat that, you know, I let the others dictate what I needed to do and, you know, in order to become whoever I, you know, they saw me as. But um, once I got out of that, you know, it was kind of like, duh, moment. Right, you know? <laughs> right, like, right. This is what I'm meant to do. No doubt, no doubt. Okay, so uh, you come to the States and uh, tell us about the deal, what you with Empire, Situation with Empire, how, how did that come about? Or Yeah, it was shortly after, I think, a couple months that I started releasing. It was probably after the first single of mine that I got the chance to collaborate with. Um, originally, Kenyan artist, King Kanja. He has okay. lived in London. Okay. He was okay. in the area. He's a huge artist friend of mine. Um, but we just got together and thought to do a different project. I was, you know, starting off as an R&B artist, but I wanted to touch into different categories because I'm never, I don't really like to be limited right, right. in anything I do. And so we just kind of like brainstormed together and we said, why don't we just do a Afrobeat, you know? No let's doubt. Let's jump into that, let's see how it goes. And we did two songs. The first went really, really far. Um, it was a whole production beat. The music video behind it, and we scratched the hundreds of thousands uh, views on the very first week of release. Wow! We went viral in Africa. We went viral in Europe, and it was just amazing. And Empire picked right. it up, and, and that's when they made my Rubika Vivo account, which is crazy. Wow! I have no artist in the first months of making music just having a Vivo account. It's it's insane, and it's a blessing. No doubt, no doubt. That that is a major accomplishment, major accomplishment. Uh, so let's talk body of work. Sure. Uh, okay. Tell us about the song. How, uh, what's the what's the song uh, based about, and uh, how, how did it come about? Uh, my last single, or yeah. Well, body of work. Oh, body of work. Oh, yeah. for me, it didn't click because everything is a body of work. But um, no doubt, <laughs> no doubt. Not myself, body of work. 
Oh man, I love that project. It was uh, it was awesome to put together. Um, it was through my really good friend Evan. He directed the project. Um, he actually directed my very first video. Uh, trust my heart, love myself for everybody who wants a throwback. So right. he's just exceptional at what he does, and we pull um, a whole cast together. I pull my after friends, my my uh, you know costume experts, and I collaborated with a clothing brand that made okay. all the designs for the music video. It was just that's just my way of working. Body of work is basically the the epitome of how I work in every single project of mine because I try to pull in as many worlds as possible. It's not just about me. It's right. not just about the track that you're going to hear. I, right. want to, I want your eyes to be treated. I want your ears to be treated. I just want you to have a full experience. So, No doubt. Yeah. No yeah. doubt. No, no doubt. No doubt. So speaking of your latest single, uh, Bass, correct? Yes. Okay, let's talk about Fast. Tell us about Fast. Sure. So Fast, uh, I've said this in another interview, Fast came so slow, man. Like from, you know, weirdly enough, from, from the lyrics and the breakdown of just the music process and getting it recorded and mixing and mastered, it was, it was just a slow process, but I think it's ironic. That, you know? and, and that's why, it's, forgive me, I almost... Spit up my water, and that's what clicked. That's what clicked in because it's kind of ironic. You said it was very slow, it's very slow, but the name of the song is called Fast. So, it, yeah, I, man, I gotta, I gotta pull a trick every time I, I release a project. So, <laughs> that's what I think. But yeah, fast and fast talks about meeting your fears, um, but not just have like a quick meet and greet and then let's go back to our old ways, right. meet them until you face them enough that you broke them that you okay. out of them wow. so that meeting might last you know a month a year a lifetime who knows that's that's you and that's your own timing but do the work you know no doubt so yeah it's 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 a paradox that it came so slow but i guess like it was just this going through this healing process and understanding what is this music about and what do I really need to communicate to my audience? But it came together with fast, and I think it was a great turnout. No doubt, no doubt. And you have a video. You have the video for fast as well, correct? Yeah, that video is out. No doubt, no doubt. Y'all definitely go run the numbers up. Uh, available now. Check it out fast. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, what's up next? What's up next for you? Uh, are we working on a, a, a full uh, EP uh, album or? Yeah, man. I mean, there's so much coming up and I hate, you know, being the artist, you know, always saying like, be on the lookout, stay tuned, but like really stay tuned because there is so much coming up. Um, I'm working on two albums simultaneously and it's, it's kind of surprising because I don't see many artists, especially my age my gender, my demographic, that not only like decide to jump only a year and a half into their career and making a full-blown album, but simultaneously working on the second one already. Wow. And yeah, it's just, it's just all the pieces of both of them, both projects that I've had in mind for seven, seven years now, have just came together last year during COVID. And it just made sense to start them together simultaneously so um it's going great and what else we can expect from 2022 is just a bunch of other releases of no doubt. Singles. we're working on completing the music videos and just the i guess campaign promo behind each right. project coming up but it's it's a lot of stuff and I'm no doubt no doubt now have you uh had a chance to uh do any shows are you performing or is that can we expect any shows upcoming for uh yes 2022 um, as well you know, unfortunately, COVID got the best of Right, right. Us. Tell me about it. Right, I right. I wish I had a whole lineup to promote at this point. Um, not many shows are lined up right now. Right. But I am uh, going to be in Atlanta late January 2022. Um, I'm doing a fashion show out there. Okay. Uh, and and we'll also do a live performance of one of my upcoming singles. So, okay. That. Okay. All right. No doubt. Uh, let's talk the chromatic look brand. Sure, okay. Chromatica is uh, my founded, you know, most recent project. 
Um, it was born in 2020. I guess another pandemic baby. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Like right. If, if, if the pandemic served for one positive aspect, it's just it opened right. everybody's mind. Right. Whether creatively or or in other areas. So. Um, yeah, Chromatica just clicked uh, within me. I said, you know, one day, what do I want to live this world with after I complete, you know, spreading my legacy? Um, and I want to give back. And so Chromatica in the long run will be a record label. Okay. Self-owned, at-home record label. And I would love to represent the artist that will fit best the brand and, you know, will represent my legacy along with theirs and what they are trying to do to change this world. And um, I would love to just be part of their mission, you know, being the representative of, you know, their their story and their music. So, that's no doubt, the Chromatica is. No doubt, no doubt. That's dope. That's dope. Um, is there anybody uh, maybe that comes to mind that you maybe see representing that brand, Chromatica, um, or or uh, is there anybody uh, that you may uh, want to work with in the future? Maybe see yourself working with the future. I would love to work with. Huh, that's a one million dollar question. Um, <laughs> I think if Beyonce didn't steal Chloe, <laughs> right? Okay, <laughs> okay, no then doubt. I would think on that artist so bad because she has such a she's one of them that I would look at and be like, Yeah, you represent what I'm about, and you know, um, as I continue to build my legacy, that's what. That's what I'm looking for. That's the flavor that I would want to add. Um, no doubt. I tell you but, what. I th so, give me your top five that best fit into that same category. Um. All right. So, I don't discriminate gender. I don't, you know, discriminate ca uh, music category. So, in the rap realm. Okay. I'll be highly interested in representing somebody like Beam. I don't know if you ever heard of him. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. Beam is is up there. Um, who else? I would love. Uh, you know, if if Queen Naja okay. would ever wants to uh, step out of her okay. Atlantic record, which I would. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, uh, let's see who else. Sabrina Claudio. Ah, uh, nice, nice. Uh, I love me some. Uh, man, there's so many. Toby Lou. He okay. Me up. Um, I like that weird but yet creative vibe. You know. No I doubt. Like it's just so. Mahalia. Uh, okay. UK based artist. Okay. Like yeah. So those those would be my top. No doubt, no doubt. Nice, nice top five. Nice, nice five. Uh, so, I guess what what would you say is the the toughest uh, obstacle being an a independent artist? Who? Uh, I think it's figuring out your worth. Ooh, um, elaborate. Uh, Speak on it. Speak on it. I like that. Yeah, I think you know it's it's easy to talk to people nowadays uh, with the assets that we get. You know, social media. You're one tap away from anybody. Right. It's easy to promote yourself. It's easy to do a music video. It's easy to to have a photo shoot done. It's easy to pull, you know, clothing together or having plugs for anything. I don't know under the, the promotion slash marketing realm. Right. Um, but when it comes to understanding what you can bring to the table, okay, I think a lot of people miss that key and just overlook it all the time, and, and that's why they, you know, some artists get frustrated about not being able to find that gap, that leap that gets no them doubt where they always dream to be. Right. Right. You know? it and just to uh, quick, quick, real quickly, um, to piggyback off what you were saying, I was just speaking with somebody the other day uh, about leverage. And we were just talking about once you have leverage, you, you now you're working with something. Absolutely. Having leverage as an independent artist, um, you know, and that's that's having the buzz and, you know, being able to bring, bring something to the table, so to speak. So, um, yeah. It's uh, just the other day, I, I, I profoundly agree with what you said. I posted something on my stories that said, don't assume you want to be seen. 
you know, put okay. yourself out there. You you need to give people a reason why they need to watch you. I like that. I like that. Cause cause that's the that's that is the 2021 problem. Literally, okay. everybody is going through this, and and the majority of artists that I know stumble upon this very small little marketing tip. If you if you can take anything out of this interview, just remember that you need to give people a reason why they gotta tap into your music or they gotta check out your content. You're not expressing yourself. People that don't post for like five years, never post stories, never right. tag anybody, right. just release. They just want to be like, oh, why did my single did ten free? <laughs> you didn't give anything to anybody for five years. <laughs> right. You didn't feed mouths at all. Right. You know. So right. you want to be fed. <laughs> so, right. It's like give, 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 give. That's no doubt, no doubt. And, and I will say too, um, just just to go along with what you're saying, consistency is is, is key. Consistency, yeah. consistency is very key. Um, so let me ask you this uh, then: um, being an independent artist, um, is it something that you uh, long term do you want to stay independent, or do you see yourself? Uh, signing, you know, with the major. I'm gonna give you the short and uh, version of the story. I uh, don't want to stay independent. I think there's so much value to signing into a record label, especially if the deal just uh, is right and the people behind it just believe in your vision and brand. I now, think it's the most beautiful thing. Now, if you don't mind, please just uh, share your perspective on that because I know we have some people listening out there too <laughs> <laughs> that. You know that 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 want to stay independent or feel you know the opposite, but just from your perspective though, because you know to each is I feel to each is they own, and, and you know so just from your perspective. Uh, I think if I were to speak on it, for me, that I'm the type of artist that does not get content until I have it all. Okay. That is the best route to fall. If you want it all, a record label is your home. Okay. If you have different goals and you are content with being a local artist and right. a, a live performer, there is right. so much beauty into that. You know, that's it's very network based, and you build a lot of rapport with a lot more people face to face than if you were just on stage in front of thousands of people. You can't meet everybody, right? Right, right. But you know, if you want to keep it intimate. You know, and if you feel the independent route is your route, then go for it. But for a person that is hungry, and you're gonna feel the hunger. Okay. It's like it's like you put a project out and you're not satisfied. Now you're on to the next. Right. That feeling, do not negotiate that feeling. Do not let that feeling go under anybody's rug, let alone your own. Like hmm. voice that feeling because that is somebody telling you that you will never get satisfied until you have all eyes on you, until you, you tap into every single soul, until you feel that you spoke to as many people as possible. And, you know, circling back to what we what we said, I think a record label behind that type of mentality is the best rapport. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, definitely. Most deaf, most deaf. Uh, what do you see yourself in the next, i say, uh, five, ten years? Long term? In five, ten years, uh, I don't care to give my age out. It's probably out already. Uh, I'll be, <laughs> I'll be thirty-one in five years. Uh, uh, I hope I have made uh, amazing projects. You know, come to life. Like, uh, you know, for sure, my first and second album by then will be out. Right. And it will be still resonating with people. Um, that's my biggest wish and um just more stuff to come i would love to work on a personal documentary uh, oh okay later down the line my life is a bit crazy man so <laughs> okay I definitely would love somebody you know with with a good eye a good perspective to uh you know to break portray my story no doubt bring bring it to the screen bring it to the screen man that's where it's at and then you know so possibly so, family, baby, let me let me let me interject then so considering uh, how you described your life and we're talking about bringing it to the screen 
Right. Who right now could you see possibly portraying? Who would be idea of portraying you? I'm gonna give me the. I thought about this. Okay. You know, because I like to speak and 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 you know and and have a knowledge about what I'm speaking. So I thought long and hard, man. No doubt. I would love some Jay Z production. Okay. Uh, on the movie. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Especially after I, go, I, I, I watched on Netflix, uh, The Harder They Fall. I don't know. If you oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dope. That's out the whole. Feeling, you know, and we all, we all know the Carter's family. So. Right. 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 Any, uh, any actress that you could see portraying? You know, I, for sure, somebody's going to come around from the States, but I would like to you know uh utilize as many people from home as possible no doubt i like that no doubt okay yeah. no so doubt. i'm gonna go back to, to my country when the time is due and i would like to uh you know utilize uh, you know my my professors my old you know school teachers and and neighbors and so yeah no no doubt no doubt that's dope that's dope so you were miss united nations Dang right. Okay, can you talk about that a little bit? <laughs> Isn't that right? Congrats, congrats. Can you talk it, about that? How, how was that experience? Okay. It happened ages ago. I feel like, I feel like 2016 was just another life ago. No doubt. Um, but yeah, I um, I was in school and I was approached by a recruiter, and they were looking for uh, a model that could represent their own country. They said we're missing Italy, so why don't you go ahead and and sign up for this competition. It's a beauty competition. Uh, we have 33 countries competing. Wow. It was it was huge and beautiful. And I bonded with so many sisters from right. all around the world. And, and then the night came and <laughs> a lot of preparation. Never would have thought I would have won that competition. But then they called my name and then they crowned me. And then and then I went on tour and then I did this. Wow. Was, That's dope. Life That's dope. Changed. And I think that's when um, most things started. No doubt. You say around that time when things pretty much launched, began to take off. Yeah, definitely. Because it, no it went right along uh, that experience that I had. Um, I don't know if you heard from a previous interview. 2014 is when I had my car accident, kind of like my spiritual awakening that I needed if, to go back into music, right? If you don't I mind, with, can, can you share that story real quick, if you don't mind? Uh, no, I haven't. Yeah, 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 for sure. Real quick, uh, it was March 2014. I, I had been in the United States, I think, one year. Okay. So I had barely no friends. and. I couldn't speak the language very well. Got into this really bad car accident, left scars. Wow. I realized, you know, I could have lost my life, so I quickly turned into what I knew. Right, right. <laughs> Always right. To be true, which was music. Right, okay. So I said, you know, forget this crap. I wanted to be a diplomat. I was studying political science. I wanted to have like a, a, a set in stone job, but I was like, right. nah, what I, what I want to do is music and music is going to be my job um and so that's where it all started but i think you know then i i continued with college 2019 2015 came around 2016 okay well late 2015 is when they recruited me because the okay. active competition was in 2016 we had almost a nine month preparation for this competition wow so yeah a year after the accident they approached me and that's that's when i was like you know what i'm going back to music right and I think this competition might open some doors. No and doubt. it really did. As a matter of fact, the night of the competition was my very first time singing. Wow. In front of an audience. I performed a song that I wrote right after the accident. So all these things, it's just, I don't know, uh, listen to your voice, I guess, when it speaks to you. Right. No doubt. Well, you know, uh, that's that's very... Um... Wow, that, that's 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 truly an amazing testimony, and you you definitely here for a reason. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that was that's the first time I really uh, heard the story of the accident, but I'm uh, glad you know, like I say, glad you're here. And if it helped jumpstart, you know, getting you back into that that music lane, then, you know, uh, yeah, I'm glad it's starting the motor for you. But uh, now now you're in motion, so we 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 trucking along now. Yeah, now we're going strong now. Okay. There's no break. We got rid of the brakes from the car. Right. All pedal to the metal. Type no of doubt. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. So let's talk uh, decline. 
Can you speak on decline? Spicy project. Did with my brother uh, okay. Jeffrey Boom. He's an amazing dancer. He actually just got him and the Boom crew. Um, he's originally from Boston, but his dance uh, group is based in Salt Lake City. No doubt. They actually, and I, got into uh, world dance. And they're gonna yeah. go compete there. I was gonna say real quick. Um, speaking of dancing too, I've seen some of your videos. <laughs> I, I see. Gonna... I seen some of your videos now. So, let, let, were you a dancer? What? Let me find. What's 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 the deal? Man, I danced for most of my life. Okay. Growing up, because I had this detachment from singing, all I wanted to do is to get into dancing. But I always knew I have a very good friend. I have a best friend that I grew up with. Okay. Grew up with. She's my sister, and she's a professional dancer, based in in Los Angeles. Um. But, I mean, it's not like I always compared myself to her, but I knew I was not a dancer. That was right. her thing, you know? Right, right. But it's just, I think dance is just another outlet. And now it's just, I do it for Instagram and I do it for entertainment. Right. I think it's, it's fun. Um, it's like I said in one of my captions, I think there is nothing more hilarious than to film something with somebody that is not a dancer. Like, it's just, <laughs> the professional dancers that I work with just right. laugh on my ass in good spirit. Well, I don't, <laughs> I, I mean, know. to be honest, I can't tell you, you do a damn good nah, job. Nah, you lying. No, nah, I'm, te no, I'm serious, you, you do a damn good job. So I'm like, what, is she a professional dancer? <laughs> Let me find out. But nah, that's that's dope, that's dope, that, that's what's, so has dancing, is it, is, something, is it something serious or is it something you just do what, in your spare time or is it something serious? You know, right now I'm taking it lightly, you know, I, I'm just having fun with it, but I would love to deep dive in it uh, even more. I would okay. love to be able to, because, you know, one day uh, when I'm performing, right. you know, I, I would love to incorporate dancing as well. I don't want to be this stick on a stage and <laughs> singing my song, you know. Right. So, so you, you want to give a real show, a real performance with all the, uh, always. the, the dancing. Always. No like I said, I my, my spe specialty is literally merging worlds. That's what I want to be known for. That's what Ludovica songs and the songbirds are basically known for. We merge worlds. We don't stick with, you know, we don't look one way and, and stay one way. It's all about bringing the fashion in and bringing the dancing in and merging those worlds together to give a full experience. No doubt. Uh, what's your take on Clubhouse? How do you feel about Clubhouse? You know, man, I, I love Clubhouse. Okay. I say that with all my heart. Clubhouse has, um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit what Clubhouse has done to me. Okay. My Clubhouse has been able to uh, introduce me to my manager, my current management. Wow, manager. that's what's up. Um, also through Clubhouse, shout out to Ari the Boss, she's oh. my PR. Wow. And uh, I went to New York back during Fashion Week and somebody from Clubhouse tapped in and not only the the dress that you see that i wore on fashion weeknight mm -hmm. is designed by somebody from jersey also a clubhouse meet wow but uh i met up with a clothing brand a second clothing brand and we were just i think it was williamsmore williamsburg new york that we were at shooting right. Right. and um he pulled up he gave me clothes we did right. a photo shoot and then right. he would like keep the clothing wow um, Another thing uh, about Clubhouse, I, I booked a music video with a brother of mine. Who's, you know, it, it's gonna be released really soon. But yeah, we just connected to a couple. It's just Clubhouse has been truly a blessing. These people have come through. I've I've met several in person, and it's just wow. they're ready to work. You can tell it's a hub of people that is not catfishing, is not right like, there for follow. And right. Then, you know they. I'm follow you like 10 minutes later right right yeah it's really right. about connection <laughs> right no nah, no doubt no doubt and um uh, you know it, it's really what you make of it um you know and i do like that you can surround yourself with uh um, you know like-minded uh individuals yeah no doubt um so i mean so, this even right this right exactly no no clubhouse so. exactly exactly so you know like i said it's 
it's it's crazy because um you i've made like you said speaking even this right here but i i made some uh dope connections as well and it's crazy because you'll meet them and make them all across the world yeah another shout out if i can go ahead um, of course another clubhouse me amazing person i i met him at the very beginning of my i guess uh you know when i got the app uh geronimo he okay to be mixing and mastering my first album so we're gonna be working on that when i go to atlanta late january 2022 another clubhouse me it's wow. just it, it's a blessing it's truly a blessing you gotta look for the people that you vibe with that you connect with uh but they're there there's no doubt that they're there no doubt well you know we definitely uh got to tap in with, with each other when you hit 8 sound when you hit the ATL in January. Oh, you're in Atlanta? Of course, of course. I'm coming, man. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so so we'll definitely tap in. That's a must. Um, but yeah, so uh, right now, any, uh, can we expect any merch? Any merch coming soon? Or uh, any merch available? Or do you see, are you, you going to dibble into the fashion? Or? Yeah, so, uh, we don't have any merch available currently, but we're working on it in the okay. back. Okay. Um, it's something that I want to do related to album number one. Okay. Um, come up with uh, with some special pieces that people can take with them forever, and you know, it's right. kind of exclusive. I don't I don't know if we're gonna do a limited edition, but um, I do want to spread it to as many people as you know possible. So yeah. yeah. No doubt, no doubt. Well, uh, definitely let the people know um, about, um, you know, all your projects that you do have available and uh, where they can copy. Online, fast, available. Um, they're in every single music platform. Music videos are out on YouTube. Uh, all the handles are Ludovica Songs. And then next release is coming up really, really soon. So hold tight. It's going to be, it's going to be magical. No, nah, no doubt, no doubt. I, I can't wait. I can't wait, and I know it is. I know it is. Um, again, um, you're welcome anytime on the Red to Learn show, Ludovica. It's been a Appreciate pleasure. You. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, man. My pleasure. Nah, no doubt, no doubt. And uh, we definitely got a link. And uh, you stay putting out that good music. Stay consistent. And um, again, sure. welcome anytime on the Red to Learn show. I appreciate you and thank you. Nah, no doubt. Before you get out of here, though, let them know how they can tap in with your, uh, your social media uh, oh, outlets. Y'all songbirds can find me on Instagram under Ludovica Songs, on YouTube the same name, Spotify the same name. It's basically the same name all across the platform. On Twitter, it's Ludovica Songs as well. You can also tap in with my uh, company, Chromatica is the only link attached i think it's uh, on my bio on instagram so go ahead and give it a follow right there and yeah we, we keep on growing just look out for the new projects coming up and connect with me i would love to be connected with you you heard it here on the red to learn show y'all little beak on the red to learn show met type radio we out of here radio yeah. snitch